estamos en vivo. This is the city of the sun. El paso de My name is Larissa Posh. Thank you so much for being with us once again on another live episode of Life and Talented. You guys, 2021 is here. And I think we got off to a rough start, right? But nonetheless, we're so excited that you're here. Our Life and Talented is about to change. So from now on, we're going to have two segments. And tonight we have a local icon, which is Miss Mexico. Miss Mexico is only 22 years old and she's so beautiful, not only on the outside, but on the inside. So I'm so excited uh, for you guys to all meet her. And for our top dogs, we have Lave Tavar. So for all of our young followers, everybody that wants to get inspired, she has great athletic skills and she has a lot of dreams and uh, we hope that you enjoy that interview. So let's go ahead and kick it off with our local icon. This segment is brought to you by Traditions, Parties, and Events, a clean, chic, and cozy venue for any type of event. Your traditions must be celebrated. Hello, El Paso. Welcome to another segment of Local Icons. And today we have an extremely important guest with us today. And I must say, man, this is this is history in El Paso. Definitely. I'm very excited, honestly. It's an honor to have this amazing person joining us today. Absolutely. Super duper excited. And I actually got to meet her when she first started. And I think you did too, right? Uh, I actually met her. Way before. Way before. Uh, she was about 14 years old. And uh, she came to uh, LAT's uh, modeling division. And... Um, she did about a year or so of modeling. She Then she went back into sports, which is, that's kind of like her yeah. thing. That was her forte. But, um, man, I mean, she's come a long way, and she, she beat the odds, to say the least. Definitely. And I think we're going to stop and not keep everybody waiting anymore. And we're going to introduce our very special guest today joining us. Her name is Ashley Alvidrez, born and raised in El Paso, Texas. And she is, of course, Miss Mexico. Ashley Alvidre. Have a seat, have a seat. Hello. Beautiful as always, and always a pleasure to see you. Oh, thank you, Andrea. Hi, Tony. Hi, Ashley. How you been? Good, good. Thank you. Thanks to God. I'm fine. My family's fine. And how are you guys? I'm so We're excited. We're doing great. We're doing great. Well, um, you I guys, we all have a little bit of past here. And uh, these two ladies share, uh, I think, a lot more in common because they're, they're beauty queens. And so. Exactly. Yeah. Man, I'm a lucky man. Look at this. <laughs> Surrounded by two gorgeous women, Miss El Paso and Miss Mexico is here. So. <laughs> no, and it is a, definitely a pleasure. But you know what? Before we even go into the pageant journey, I want to know who Ashley Alvidres is. Just Ashley. Without the Miss or any titles or competitions, who is Ashley Alvidres? Well, to begin with, Ashley was not a beauty pageant person. She was not a girly girl at all. Tony knows that better than anyone <laughs> since I started here in LNT Studio. This is where I told my mom I wanted to see what modeling was all about. Yeah. This is where I took my first classes, my first modeling steps <laughs> in the runway right here next door. And I grew up in El Valle de Juarez. I was born here in El Paso and living in a border city you grow up in this multicultural place. It's the melting pot. And I believe that has bonded me and made me the person I am today. And I feel extremely proud of it. Growing up in El Valle de Juarez, I grew up in the rural area, the area where, where you see the people 
Um, I mean, they're agricultures, yeah. and it's beautiful. And then I cross the border, and I'm in a, and I'm in the city. I'm mm -hmm. in El Paso, Texas, and I mean, that's part of who I am. I love animals with a passion. You go to my house, I have like a zoo. I have a million animals. <laughs> But it's one of the things I have a huge passion for aside from sports. Basketball was my thing. It was something I tr truly, truly love. It's my passion. And that's where I thought my life was headed. Tony knows that yeah. more than anybody. I told him, you know what? Because I didn't want her to leave. I'm like, no, don't leave. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to play college ball until suddenly I had this turn where I started to see Miss Universe a lot, Miss World a lot. And I said, I'm going to give it a try. I really want to see what I'm capable of, and what I have in me. Because Tony left that fire in me, that little, like, oh, wanting so to sweet. dig He planted more. a seed. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no, I really have to go for it. And I begged my parents to really let me do this. Because my dad is a huge sports fanatic. And he was like, no, just play college ball. I mean, you're going to be school paid for. It's a great route to take. Yeah. And I didn't know, like, that's not what I want. And I really want to go for this new experience. I really want to know what's it like to win a city pageant. Yeah. And that was my goal. I just wanted to see what it was like to win a city pageant. And so I go off, I cross the border, and I compete for Miss Ciudad Juarez. And when I get there, it's just a new experience. And the pageant itself, Beauty with the Purpose, it's something I grew up with. I grew up seeing my grandmother do social labor more than anything, work with people. And my grandma, my grandma really left this passion in me that I wanted to continue. So seeing that a beauty pageant had that, that's when I like I was yeah. like, no, you know what? It's a definitely a yes. So then I win Miss Juarez and I was like, oh my God, like how did I win? I don't <laughs> I don't speak flu like perfect Spanish and nor perfect English. We live in a border city where we speak Spanglish. That's English. a norm here. Yeah. And so Everybody was shocked. They're like, how can a person with a, because I have a bi-nationality, I'm thankful for that. And they were saying, how could a person like that, a pocha, because that's how they call us pochos, <laughs> win. Yeah. And so I go off to the state pageant. I win Miss Chihuahua. And then that was even more shocking to me. I remember <laughs> I that day. I had a lot of work to do. I, you texted yeah. me that yeah. day. You congratulated me. You were yeah. so happy, Tony, and I was, I was so happy. I think we <laughs> all were. We were like, what? She's <laughs> we're all thing up and down. Yes. Yes. But, you know, hold on. Before we go into the more juicy stuff, <laughs> before you went to Miss Juarez, because I know I met you in pageants here in El Paso, and I don't even know how many years ago that was. I want to say maybe five years, four years, not too sure. It's been a long journey. <laughs> but you started competing for Belleza Latina, right? Yes, that's yes. the one my mom, she put me in there. Like, my mom, she was the one that wanted me to go through, like, the American route. And my family, they were like, oh, it's because you're, like, a Latina and you're perfect. Cause, and I was like, fine, like, you you wrote me down. I'll just try it. Like, mm -hmm. But I still wasn't, like, sure of it because I was mm -hmm. into sports. Like, that was my route. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to go for You that. were a jock. And if I remember I correctly, you, you were, were if I remember correctly, you were still, you know, always up there, even when you were competing here in El Paso. I mean, you were always in the That's top crazy, though, and I was like, everything. I would go to the Belleza Latina practices, like, in the car, I would get there, take off my basketball shorts, my socks, my, my Jordans, like, I would take off everything and, like, <laughs> try to transform as fast as I can, like, and get into heels and walk and I was like oh. oh it was kind of tiring but I think it was worth it it was worth the experience and the knowledge you gain from something small that really turns out into something big absolutely you true. still have your J's of course I yeah. do <laughs> do you play like do you do you keep do you keep kind of like your I your haven't rhythm? since well since everything started it was like a roller coaster and that yeah. roller coaster it's slowly coming down but it still hasn't I yeah. mean our lives are itself, they're full of roller coasters. Every human being has their ups and downs. And right now, I'm barely having a pause in my life. I've been traveling like crazy. And I haven't been able to pick up a ball and tell my friends, let's go pick up a one in one or let's go play. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Like, that is beauty, crazy. Like, you know what? But I love that. I love that because you are just so real and so true to yeah. who you are. And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people, when they think of pageants or beauty queens, they think of, you know, the tall, blonde, skinny, 
kind of airhead type of girl. <laughs> and that is totally the opposite of what a beauty queen is. I mean, you truly are a true beauty queen because you're true to yourself. You know your value, you have morals, yeah. you care about your community. Of course, you're gorgeous, but not only that, you know, oh, thank you, you can play <laughs> sports and you are smart and you still go to school. So that says a lot. And so you're public speaking. Yeah, wow, I'm like, definitely. So nice. you're setting the bar pretty yeah. high for whoever comes next. <laughs> How old are you, Ashley? I turned 21 in December. 21. Um, you know what? There's something that you mentioned right now, and I think Andrea also touched on it. Um, I've always been a little oblivious and out of the loop with what pageantry really is. And speaking with Andrea um, and listening to you and then talking to your mom in the previous year or months, um, this is real social work. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by the amount of, of, of good deeds that you've done. Um, I remember not too long ago, I think it was October, November, uh, she was losing sleep because she was going to feed or take blankets to the immigrants down at the bridge. Am I right? Yes. Sir. And I, I'm, I was like, wow, like, this is something that I think comes with your family. I know a little bit of your mom. Your, your mom and I went yeah. to went, we went to high went school, to high school together. What? Yeah, we went to They're high school together. Bulldogs, horrible dog. <laughs> you're, you're a scorpion, right? You're Horizon. Yes, I graduated okay. from Horizon. And then we have we have a blazer here. Blazer, go Blazers! Yeah. Never um, forget about the Blazers. And your mom, I'm, I think, I know for a fact, she instilled all these great morals and, and values in you. But uh, but you ran with this, man. I mean, you've gone above and beyond. Like, exp explain to us a little bit of, of the things that you've done throughout your, you know, this title that you hold. I could tell you a whole list, but I believe one of the most important things is working with your family. Without my parents, they're like my spinal cord to me. I wouldn't be who I am, Tony, how you mentioned. My mom and my father have guided me and helped me throughout this journey, helping other people. Without their help, I wouldn't be able to help. And the most surprising thing that you wouldn't believe, it's not that they learn from me or other people learn from me trying to help these people. It's you learn from the people you're helping. You learn Absolutely. from the children you help, mm -hmm. from the mothers and parents that go through this lifestyle. And it is incredible. When I first started, I mean, I was helping my community, El Valle de Juarez. I'm proudly from there. Le mando saludos a toda mi gente. Because <laughs> they're always saying, and they are, they're a huge support system to me. Cool. And I would help them out there with my grandma and when she passed away, um, me and my mother, my family, um, we kept going, doing the stuff she was doing, helping the elderly shelter that they had. For their, it was a creative shelter that they had, so they wouldn't be upset about being abandoned and alone. So we continued that. When I won Miss Chihuahua, I was introduced to uh, the Ramuri community. It's an indigenous community that, that lives in the Taramara Sierra de Chihuahua. It's way out there. I mean, you have to travel six hours and by foot. There's no road. Oh, wow. There's no roads at all. There's not a <laughs> donkey that can give, they give you a lift. <laughs> you can. <laughs> but they are incredible people. They live up to their beliefs and their values, and it's extremely beautiful. I mean, when you cross the border to Juarez, you get to see some of them. You get to see the women wear their skirts. They ask for money. I mean, that's their, life, their lifestyle here. We're trying to introduce them to use their lifestyle, to use their knowledge to sell it, to profit. So we could start selling like worldwide, not only here in our nation, in Mexico, in the U.S., but worldwide. So people could get to know their culture, their beliefs. And we help them taking clothing, as much food as we can. Hopefully we could get a water system, an electrical like system out there because they live completely out there in the Sierra. I mean, there's nothing. Nothing. nothing yeah, there's absolutely. Long. We are lucky to have water Blessed. at our hands. Yeah. They have to go down to a river and be thankful that there's water in a river if there's no water they have to wait for rain to fall in their jars that are made of clay barro, barro. and for them to be filtered out and to be able to drink it most of the children i spoke to a lot of little girls they don't get to go to school because ever since they're small they have to learn how to work they have to learn how to bring money home so they could have a bread in their table and it is just incredible and coming from a border city, we face immigration. It's something that as soon as you cross the border, it's something you see. 
And becoming Miss Juarez, I got to cross the border a lot more than I was accustomed to. I walked it so many times, hundreds of times. And seeing that, sadly, I saw many things. I got to see people cross the river and be stopped at the fence uh. with children. And it is just something like that touches your heart. Something yeah. so impactful that you say, like, that could have been me. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so moving. Hard. It's so moving. I'm sorry to, that you saw that. And But, you know, it's, it's such an inspiration, um, you know, for you to have gone through that and speak about it because a lot of people are oblivious to it. They, they have no clue that this is existing. Like, this is real, you know? And, and, and that was my purpose when I went to Miss World. People like you with, with, this, with the stage, with the platform, uh, should be doing what you're doing. And, and man, I, I'm blessed to, to have... To have be here with you and, and share this because I know you have an amazing heart and God put you in this position because you're That's able it. to share these words. Um, I know that yeah. Andrea, I, I've been speaking to her. The, the more we work together, the more I learn about her <laughs> and pageantry. And God put you guys in the right spot. Like you guys are good-hearted girls and and uh, perfect for for the actual objective, which is speaking of these things, you know, letting people know that hey, we need to move. We need to do something about this. Be aware of Sometimes it. Sometimes we forget yeah. to be yeah. thankful about the simple things we have in life. Yes. Definitely. And I think um, from everything that you've said, that's a lot for people to take in at home because, of course, that is the job of a beauty queen, you know, to, to be vocal, to bring awareness to issues that many people sometimes neglect or don't want to accept. Um, so thank you for all of the work that you put in and for all of the people that you've helped and touched. And I hope people at home understand that you don't need a crown and sash to go out and help. You don't need a crown and sash well to see said. the problems that our world are, you know, is facing. Every single person wears an invisible crown. Tony is wearing a crown right now, and I see it. You know, we're all yes. We have the power to make a change. So don't, I feel like sometimes people hear these stories from beauty queens or people who are wealthy, etc. And then they put that barrier up and or those excuses and they say, oh, well, you know what? They have a crown and sash or you know what? They have the money, but yeah. you don't need any of that. All you need is the passion. All you need to do is care. So thank you for that. And before we go, I do want you to tell us a little bit about really quickly, briefly, um, your best experience at Miss Mexico. Of course, probably winning was probably <laughs> part of that, but tell us a little bit about that. I believe winning was one of like the most amazing experiences. It was like a dream. Actually, that night I couldn't believe it. So the following week I couldn't believe it. But one of the most beautiful things are the friendships and sisterhoods you get to meet. I still talk to every single girl and it's just incredible as I've been traveling to every state. I get to see the girl and it's just amazing. You get to see your sister, their family. They just receive you with their arms open and tell you this is your home for you to come to every time you come. And it's just incredible. That's one of the best experience. I mean, it was just having fun with friends. It's like going to a party with 32 girls, like beautiful, amazing, strong, talented girls from all over Mexico and just having fun with them. It's just a yeah. party, a gathering of girls that are just trying to make a dream come true. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, your boyfriend is here with you today. Yes. And uh, he doesn't want to be on the camera, but I'm going to ask him if he can just quick little sneak peek of uh, the crown. Well, just get your hands if you don't want your face <laughs> to come out. You can bring it. There you go. Oh, my yeah. goodness. And I know you told us it's really heavy, right? It is heavy. After a while, it starts hurting. Oh, I'm scared to go. <laughs> oh my Ooh, boy. I love one was it. See. Okay. You, you want to grab a, a, a closer shot here? There we go. That Let's is beautiful. Out. Yeah, I can definitely see why it's heavy. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Beautiful. And actually, what? I mean, have you probably visited. You want to bring me the case real quick so we can put it back in here, Salvador? There we go. Perfect. And anyway. it's losing a lot of stones because I oh. I often take them off. 
to give it to children that they get really excited with the crown and they're full of dreams and illusions. And I remember I, that used to be me. That used to be the child. I used to be a child that looked up to somebody and I always tried, I take them off and I give it to them so they could have a little memory. So I'm sorry. Really? <laughs> Actually, I remember what I was going to say. Um, is part of your duties, do you have to travel within the year? Do you have to go travel every state in Mexico? Have you done the majority? What I mean, are you missing? I have. I'm missing some of them, a lot of them, like half of them. Okay. Almost to be exact. But yes, I get to travel all of Mexico and it's just incredible. Every state has like their own culture and it's crazy. Like yeah. they have different food, the music's different. Up in the north, you have banda yes. and corridos and everything. And you go down to the south and it's marimba and salsa and it's just like <laughs> Mexico. It's 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 its own world yeah. and I'm proud of it. I'm proud to be the representative of Mexico, of my border city and to be out there in the world saying, I come from the city of El Paso and Ciudad Juarez and I'm representing Mexico. The Absolutely. diversity that everybody wants in the world to come visit. Thank you. Well, do they call you Chava? Okay, Chava. They do. <laughs> Chavita. Okay. Um, well, I think we're getting down to the end of our, of our interview. And um, I'm extremely happy for you. And uh, we're blessed that you're representing an entire country. And that you're from here, from the Sun City. And, and uh, what more can we ask for? A lot of people have been doing, you know, uh, great things and speaking for El Paso. Uh, Khalid is there and Jones is there. Uh, a lot of artists. And then we have Ashley Alvidres that, that people need to know about and uh, all the great things that you stand for. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Definitely, I mean, Tony, you're better. I mean, we're <laughs> super proud of you. Right, you know, before we go, maybe in three words or a sentence, tell us, what is next for Ashley Alvidres once she turns in her Miss Mexico crown? Get my diploma. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, definitely make my parents working it hard for me to be able to attend school, pay off, and still continue to be the inspiration to children. That education is the key to success more than anything. And to be able to tell them, I got my education and so can you. And be able to promote that. What what mm -hmm. a what better example can you get? I absolutely love it. You are so transparent, so humble and caring, and we absolutely love you. And it's an honor to have had you join us here yeah, today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. No, but thank you all for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. See you later. Thank you, Miss Mexico. It was definitely a pleasure to have you as our local icon, and I am personally so excited to get to work with you. Ms. Mexico is also our guest for Unmatched. So Unmatched is our mini reality series that will be airing very soon, but we need our followers to be the judge, okay? So we have three teams, red, silver, and blue. We need you to vote for your favorite. So Ms. Mexico is one of the judges, and thank you once again for appearing with us tonight. All right, you guys, so for our next segment, we have Top Dogs. We have a very special guest. Her name is Lave Tovar. She is a very talented and inspiring individual, and I cannot wait for you guys to see this segment because I truly got inspired. So I hope that she gets to bring the inspiration and love to El Paso. So let's go ahead and kick it off with our Top Dog segment. Get discovered. Maximize your exposure and play at the next level. Prep one. Follow us on all social media platforms. My name is Lave Tobar. I'm 20 years old. I attend Southern University in Louisiana. I'm a forward and I play soccer. I live in El Paso, Texas, and I was raised by my mom and dad, Jesse and Gloria Tovar. My favorite women's soccer team has to be the U.S. national team, and soccer player on there has to be Tobin Heath. My favorite men's team is Barcelona, and favorite soccer player is Messi, of course. My favorite artist is Lil Baby, and my favorite food is tacos. 
When I was a kid, I was a little bit of a troublemaker, uh, but I was always very competitive with my brothers and sisters. Um, I wouldn't say, say I was the worst child, but I know my family loved me. <laughs> my role models would be my parents. Um, every day they work hard for their children and um, I strive to be as successful as they are. They always make sure that they provide for us um, as much as possible and you know they work hard for us. So um, I hope to one day be as great as them. The reason why I chose soccer was because I just fell in love with the game at a young age. And I ran track and my dad noticed that I had speed so he was like maybe I should try uh, working with the ball. So he put me in soccer and I instantly fell in love with it. I say my coaches. Uh, I played with Cosmos or Galacticos uh, with Javier and Jaime and my old coach Chava. Um, at a young age, I started with him and then I grew on to playing with uh, another team. Some of the injuries that I had to overcome was definitely, I tore my hamstring, I fractured my wrist and I tore my ACL. So overcoming those injuries was definitely a hard process. Um, Waking up every day going to rehab was definitely probably one of the hardest parts and not playing soccer. So it broke me because I wasn't out there with my teammates and having fun, but that just made me push harder. Nuts. Some of the injuries I overcame was tearing my ACL, fracturing my wrist, and um, I tore my hamstring like throughout my years in soccer and it was very difficult because I had to go through rehab and I wasn't able to play the sport that I love every day. Some of the achievements that I'm most proud of is being a four-year all-district soccer player, three-year um, all-city soccer player, since I could have been a fourth year, but due to my injury, I was unable to achieve that. Um, but I am very grateful to receive 36 offers playing my senior year. I thought that I wasn't going to receive any offers due to my injury. I thought that I was really over with at that point, but I actually ended up getting a full scholarship to a D1 college. I chose Southern University because I wanted to try something new. Even though it's in Louisiana, I wanted to um, explore different things. It was definitely a culture shock for me, but I was able to adapt to it. And uh, I built a good relationship with the coaches and teammates. So um, I fell in love with the campus and the team. Uh, one of the top five skills that I have is definitely ball work. Um, Growing up, I practiced with Memo every day and my coaches, so I was able to build my ball work and my skills. Skill number two would definitely be my adaptive skills. Um, my coaches have always moved me to different positions. I began playing a defender when I was younger, and as I started growing, they moved me to mid and then outside forward and then I became a forward, so that's when I started scoring goals. My third skill would be shooting. Um, once I started becoming a forward, uh, I had to obviously become a better shooter. So every day I always trained um, practicing sh my shooting. Number four would be my agility. Um, I was always doing ladder work and a lot of footwork uh, on my own, not just during practice, but I had to work on my own every day to obviously become a better player. Number five would have to be my love and passion for the game because uh, I feel like that's very important to have when you're playing your sport. Because if you don't love what you're doing, then how do you expect to continue playing? <laughs> Great. Right. How are you? Good, thanks for having me.
you know, uh, it, it was a very, so many things originated from her injury. Uh, she had a lot of momentum going in, uh, you know, going into high school. She was already separating herself from the pack. So going into her sophomore year, we had all the momentum in the world. And uh, going into her junior year, uh, that fall, she started kicking field goals for her high school football team. Over there at Del Valle, she ended up being a, you know, district and by district champion. The thing is, marketing LaVey so effectively since her, since her freshman year, I was getting contacted by a lot of parents from other sports, from softball players, volleyball players, which I had nothing, I didn't know anything about the sport. I was trying to figure out how can I bring this to fruition and is this something I really wanted to do? Was it really gonna take off? I had the formula that worked and because of LaVey, uh, uh, year to date, I, I've helped almost 100 athletes uh, find uh, scholarships. Prep One was originated as an idea that uh, that flourished when I started marketing LaVey. My dad creating Prep One, um, that's probably one of the most amazing things I ever um, heard of. Uh, one other thing that I want to mention is uh, Joseph and Robert at Top View Fitness. They helped me after my injury. And they really trained me and got me ready to uh, go on to the next level. My name is LaVey Tovar from Southern University and you're watching Top Dogs. Thank you so much, LaVey Tavar, for being our special guest this evening in Top Dogs. Truly inspirational. So for all of our youth watching, not only our youth, but the women, I think that's very important to emphasize. Me being a girl and seeing you truly was inspirational. All of our athletes out there, you know, she's really representing the El Paso area in a great way. So thank you so much. It was definitely an honor watching your story and your dreams. So keep it up and we're watching you. Uh, so that's it for us tonight, you guys. Thank you so much for being with us. Don't forget to follow us on our YouTube channel. We have great things for you all. We have a new mini reality series called Unmatched, and we need you to be the judge. So we're really trying to get the city of El Paso together. We have teams red, silver, and blue, and you need to vote for your favorite one. So go ahead and follow us on YouTube, Live and Talented, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, all right? Our first challenge was done on Facebook, and we are about to reveal challenge number two, where you get to vote, all right? So thank you so much once again, and that's it for us tonight. My name is Larissa Posh. We'll see you here next Friday. Subscribe to our YouTube channel under LAT Studio and hit the bell to get the notifications when all episodes premiere.